tuning in, trying to find out how to win. Go along and tell a friend, marathon, you know the game. Keep on running, never end. Getting better, make a man. Adam got it, Adam got it, Adam got it, Adam got it. Possibility, 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 possibility. Tune in. Uh, great to have you on the podcast. How are you doing, sir? Good, Adam. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, I just thought I'd like kind of uh, you know start off by you know introducing you, and um, I see that you kind of specialize in like you know like eye health and um, the website you know and myopia. Like, can you kind of explain a bit more about that? And you've been on a lot of health, a lot of health and wellness podcasts as well. Some really great podcasts you've been on. Yeah, I'm like the donkey making the rounds. <laughs> but so, okay, so the topic's actually kind of interesting. It's glasses. People need to wear glasses. And there is this mainstream assumption that you just have a genetic defect. That means that you're just one of the people that are not lucky and you got to wear glasses or contact lenses or do LASIK or whatever because your eyesight is just not great. And my premise, just by way of introduction, is I'm saying that that's not correct. I'm saying that your eyes are fine. There's no health problem. You don't actually need glasses. It's just a misdiagnosis and a mistreatment of what's just uh, basically a muscle spasm. So the whole, this is kind of a little bit of an out there topic because the mainstream has not caught on to this at all. But the idea being is that there's basically nobody who really needs glasses in life. Mm. Yeah, no, it's... It's really interesting you made that point because I think like it, it is isn't in kind of like you know the, the media. It's not really, you know, it's like if you've got an eye problem, then you go and get an eye test, then you get an eye test, and then you get glasses. And yeah, I think it's really cool. important, you know, the point that you make and you know the work that you're doing. There's um, it's it's basically, and I'm not like I'm not a conspiracy dude, and I'm not one of those people who doesn't believe in mainstream healthcare or advocate some kind of weird diets. Like there's a category of people, nothing against them, but I'm not really putting myself in a category. It's just that there's a fair amount of stuff that when it comes to mainstream, like healthcare ish kind of topics that you go see some kind of doctor or specialist and generally speaking, they're treating symptoms. And you're still young, so you don't have this issue quite yet, but you're going to find that <laughs> the longer you live, the more you've got aches and pains and issues. And the general response in most cases is some kind of pill, right? Like mm. they wait till something goes wrong. And then when something goes wrong, they put you on basically a subscription plan of whatever kind of treatments or medications. And part of a lot of the health stuff, that I've done and podcasts I've been on, there's a lot of people who are saying, okay, you can fix or prevent a lot of those things with diet and exercise and staying away from some of those pills. I'm kind of in that general mm. category. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. You know, like my opinion, I, I don't take, you know, luckily any medication or any pills or anything like that. I take, you know, antibiotics, which are like um, uh, vitamins, you know, vitamin tablets. Um, that's about it but I think like there is more kind of going on than people see and you don't necessarily need medication or pills or tablets or these kind of things to deal with certain problems and I think like you said you know like your diet you know your exercise your mental health these kind of attributes and your lifestyle kind of have a you know massive effect on people's well-being and I think you can kind of change those up a little bit you know, instead of just, just thinking the pills are the solution to yeah. or, or certain medications. By the way, your your microphone kind of rubs on your shirt when you leave Okay. That. Yeah, and yeah. I think I'll it's it. messing up. I think it's screwing up your audio. At least that's what I'm hearing. But yeah, okay, so that, hold it. that's, and then, so my area specifically is eyesight. And the thing is, the reality is, and I'll give you the super, super short version, right? Because most people that are not into this it, the eyes glaze over when they start hearing it. But basically what happens is there's a muscle in your eye. It's a circular muscle that controls a lens that moves the light in your eye, depending on if you look at something up close or something far away. And 
when you, the closer your eyes are focused, the more that muscle tightens up. So when you're looking at your phone at this distance, that muscle in your eyes, super tight, right? Or you're studying in school, whatever it is, that's long sustained close up. And then what happens is that muscle eventually just doesn't relax. So it is a spasm basically. And there's a, a great way to do research online is scholar.google.com. It's uh, the clinical science search engine part of Google. And you type in pseudomyopia explains this phenomenon. There's tens of thousands of clinical studies that show that when you go to the optometrist and the optometrist says you need glasses, actually the, the underlying problem that they're giving you glasses for is just a muscle spasm. So mm -hmm. my whole thing, my dog and pony show of doing podcasts is going, hey, the first time you go to the optometrist and your eyesight's fine, it's just a little mm -hmm. funky at a distance. You spend a lot of time in front of screens, consider it's a muscle spasm. And if you don't start wearing glasses, you're going to be fine. But if you do start wearing glasses, you're going to need them forever. Wow. That's it's quite scary, isn't it? When you think about it, it's pretty scary when you think of that, because, uh, I think people, you know, once they start wearing glasses, they just get used to it. And, you know, even my, my own parents, you know, they wear glasses and, uh, like my, my dad, you know, he, he buys, um, these cheap glasses, you know, which are just kind of like magnifying ones that haven't actually been prescribed. And I'm like, that's probably, you know, a really bad for your eyesight, just buying these cheap glasses because your eyes are adjusting to uh, all these different uh, magnifications. A little bit of a different issue that's called presbyopia. When you get old, that same lens in your eye that I was talking about, that that muscle shapes, mm -hmm. that lens gets harder as you get old. So it's less flexible. Mm -hmm. So that muscle can't shape the lens as much anymore, meaning you can't see as close as clearly, right? Mm -hmm. So basically that's an age related thing that you can't really prevent. But in mm -hmm. most cases you don't need, like they'll sell you glasses for it. And then it's like more relaxing to read up close. And then you need those glasses too, right? So mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, the whole presbyopia, like age related, can't see clearly up close thing the best way to prevent it is just to not start wearing those glasses. Once mm. you do, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's really interesting. Cause like you said, you know, it's, it's just a, a muscle, an acute muscle that, um, you know, like you said, um, is adjusting, you know, to light and how, how much, you know, we look at screens and, you know, things like this. Um, like where, where do you, do you think like the kind of solution is to try and, uh, to kind of broadcast this to people, you know, like, do you, have you had like a lot of people who have, um, you know, take, taken, you know, this, this advice and, and seen the benefits? Well, I've been doing this for the last 20 or so years. And mm. um, we've got tens of thousands of people that have done this literally like the, even just, we started a Facebook group not long ago. That's got like 18,000 or so members now. Yeah lots of progress reports. I've got my own little quasi podcast where we talk progress reports, bunch of people. Once you've got glasses, you can reverse your need for glasses, but it takes time, right? Like it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a commitment where you slowly basically lower the strength of your glasses till eventually you don't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's catching on to the point where a lot of times people have already heard of this somewhere because it's kind of fairly out there as mm -hmm. a conversation, but it's still, like now the problem is like kids, right? Like young kids, especially like they, the, the phone becomes a babysitter, right? So the, a little kid spending a lot of time with this close up distance, same thing happened, the muscle spasms, and then mm. kids start squinting. Parents take the kid to the optometrist, optometrist sells mm. the parents a subscription for the kid's eyesight. And that's the stuff that really bugs me that mm. if people just knew what's actually happening, you could prevent this whole, you don't need to go there, right? Like, and the thing is too, like once you start wearing glasses, it looks like maybe you don't need any wear any, is yeah. it changes how you move. It changes how you interact with the world. You get this, mm. like your, your social function changes because you're kind of static, stuck behind these lenses that only, yeah. can only see clearly through the middle. So your eye movement gets different and your neck movement gets different. And you mm. just start projecting this image of this stereotypical like nerd type which yeah. is nothing but like you're stuck behind these things so now you act 
quote unquote, a little bit weird. And then people treat you that way. And then you become like your personality and your, your mm. physical activities and everything gets affected by this, this weird lens where that we get into. Yeah. No, I think they're, I think they're really good points. And I think like you said, um, that's what I think some people don't really take into consideration is that like, you know, it affects, you know, the way people act, you know, behave and probably, the, you know, people's self-esteem and their confidence of how they think about themselves because they have glasses. I mean, I, I only ever had glasses for a short period and they were reading glasses when I was in primary school. And I remember I had them in primary school for like a short period of time and I just didn't need them anymore. I, um, I just, I think my eyes got better, but um, I've not worn them ever since. I've not really had any problems, you know, my eyesight, but you know, as a kid, I mean, when I had them, I had like these round kind of Harry Potter ones. And um, <laughs> I remember feeling you know, a bit stupid, you know. Yeah. So, you know, kind of it's you're not yourself when you wear those mm -hmm. things. Right? Like it, it changes your whole because it changes your social interactions. It changes how people treat you and then it changes how you view yourself. It's just a silly that the problem with the whole thing is like, for one, you spend a bunch of money on it. But two, it's 100 percent unnecessary. And it's mm. just a, it's a quick fix that you could avoid if people told you, but nobody tells you because it makes no money to tell you, right? Like there's mm. the, the things I'm talking about make zero profit because all I'm basically saying is you don't need that stuff, right? And mm. there's no money in it. So there's no funding for studies or education or shops because I got nothing to sell. So mm. it's, it's really just the idea of like, if, if somebody listens to your podcast, right? And they wear glasses mm. and they start looking into this, it's just the freedom of choice right that yeah. at least you know about it at least you can go okay let me research this yeah no, i think that i think that's a really good point i think it's something that should be you know talked about more and looked into because i think as you know glasses are expensive and um you know, just for reading glasses it's expensive i mean it's, it's a big massive business you know a bit like pharmaceuticals where you know they do they probably you know it's a business isn't it they want to make money because people you know, you've got bad eyesight, oh, take this. And I think that's kind of, you know, been pushed into, into society for so long. And I think, you know, the research and, you know, the things that you're talking about are really key. Um, do, do you think that people's eyesight are affected more so now because of phones and, certain, um, you know, screen time and video games and, and these kind of things? Because people are more so, you know, looking at technology nowadays. Do you think people need to, you know, balance their, their screen time? So that they protect their eye health yeah you it gets into a big topic because the reality is the entire problem is that muscle spasm and that muscle spasm happens because you're looking at you know a super close distance for hours and hours on end and as long as you're super addicted to your phone your eyesight's not going to get better it's like if you're if you've got a mcdonald's and pizza problem right like no matter mm. how much you go jogging, you're still going to have a weight issue. And it's like that, like there's a definite, like a kind of an addiction story mm. there. And I try not to go there because then mm. people are really like, screw that. I love my phone and Netflix yeah. and the games and whatever, right? Like that's definitely a component, but it's kind of the, I just cover mostly the topic of, Hey, your eyes are fine. And mm. then let you dig into what does that mean to your life? You know mm. what I mean? Like, I, I try not yeah. to be the dude who says you shouldn't use your phone. Yeah. No, no, I agree. And I think, like, I mean, I think it's being aware of it, isn't it? I mean, I I use, you know, my phone for podcasts and, you know, for, you know social media and, you know, using a phone. Um, but, like, you know, I'll play video games, you know, I'll kind of play video games at the weekend, but I'm very balanced, you know, in my time and what I do because I know if I'm staring at my phone, you know, and I've got many podcasts, so, you know, I have to have those breaks where I just don't look at a screen because, you know, I, I, I kind of feel, you know, the strain on, on my eyes. Um, but I think, like you said, like, probably, you know, the balance of it and um, just like you said, being aware and just trying out kind of not wearing glasses and kind of, you know, when you talked about, you know, the muscle. By the way, also, um, just because you mentioned earlier, glasses are expensive, that's true. But the wholesale cost of lenses and this is the kind of stuff that i just think is kind of funny mm. you're in the uk so we're talking two yeah. or three british pounds is how much the optometrist pays for a pair of lenses like i've got all the wholesale sheets of all lens manufacturers 
current ones, right? Like with all the coatings, all this stuff, you go to the optometrist who says, oh, this is 50 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds, two to three pounds, five, if you're getting really high end, is what mm. most lenses and glasses cost. So their profit margins are massive. That's insane. Especially, especially if you get, you know, uh, Hugo Boss or Versace, you know. <laughs> the frames, and that's separate, right? Like that's just the lenses. Like I'm just talking about like, the lenses in the frames, the frames, that's a whole nother, that's a huge racket. Like frames mm. are just, some are made in Italy and most of them are made in China. And most of those big brands are made in the same factories as the no-name stuff. Like all that's, all glasses stuff makes a huge amount of profit. Huge. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, I, <laughs> I, um, I have to think about that. Because, you know, especially the self-esteem and the confidence side of it, because I think that's really key. That's really important as well. It kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Because, you know, people need to feel, you know, good about themselves. They want to feel okay in themselves, you know, in their health and their eye health. And I think that's not really something that's kind of, kind of in the media, you know, I don't, I don't think. No, it's not. It's, it, it never, this stuff never is. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the weird thing is I try not to fall into the rabbit hole of stuff mm. just because I do all these like health related podcasts and diet mm. stuff mm. and people that mm. are really into like so many things that you can actually prevent or improve just by what you put in your body. And then mm. how much of that doesn't get discussed when you go to a, a doctor, right? With an issue who is always, who's never asking you what you're eating and always just going here, take this pill. So I'm a little like disillusioned by the whole mm. general thing. But when it comes to like, especially like self-esteem and stuff, it is, so there's an interesting thing. Contact lenses is less so, but with glasses, you mm. lose your peripheral vision, right? Like mm. you got these things in front of your eyes and your eyes only, you only have clear focus to the center of those things. So your whole mm. peripheral vision is just blur. And what happens, your brain has a visual cortex. The visual cortex analyzes the signal that comes from your retina. And basically mm. your brain is interpreting what it's seeing. And mm. what your brain says is shit, there's something completely screwed up here. My peripheral vision is gone, right? And all the throughout evolution that the tiger doesn't eat you, right? Or the car hits you from the side or just something's coming from over mm. here, right? I can't see it. And you can, because you've got normal vision. I mean, you can put your hands at 180 degrees, like just next to your eyes and you can still see them, right? But if you're wearing glasses, that is just a blurry nothing. So theory being that this creates a fair amount of just low, low grade, always there anxiety. Like mm. your brain is anxious because it just keeps going. There's something wrong. Parts of this vision is missing and I don't know what's coming, right? So. Mm. When you, when you observe kids with glasses, like there's an anxiety, there's like a, you know, they're jumpier, they're not as chill, not as relaxed, because there's just all this bit of your vision that's supposed to be there isn't there. Just mm. so many details when it comes to what you're talking about, like self-esteem and all that stuff, where just putting glasses on somebody's face is such a bad idea. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I and mean, I think it's, I mean, I, I don't, personally wear glasses uh, you know like full time but like yeah like you said it's um, kind of that kind of restricted kind of like you know vision like you said um you know we're designed you know to see what's going on around us in danger you know in case of danger and i think like if you're kind of limited to uh you know x amount of vision then that's you know going to have in effect because people might think oh what you know i can't see if especially you know if people have to probably travel to work or go, you know walk certain routes that might be quite do you know what i mean like quite busy you know like especially if you're in new york <laughs> um so i mean it's really interesting and i think like you said um would you would you say like i said certain foods kind of have an impact on our eyesight and there's certain foods or things we can take to improve our eyesight because like drinking water and eating it's the screens. It's really the screens. Like for sure, like the whole, your whole, the, your body's a connected system, right? Like if you put crap into it, it's going to affect everything. Um, like insulin spikes are not good for your eyesight. 
of course, if you're dehydrated, you're going to have dry eyes. It's not good for your eyesight. So there's definitely, do you want to be generally taking care of yourself? But if you want, if you're wearing glasses and your eyesight's not great and you're looking for a fix, it's the screens. And mm. there's a lot of like studies about outdoor and sunlight and eye vitamins and all that stuff. And people always try to try that stuff first because they don't want to face the reality of your screen habit mm. is the problem but the only thing that will improve your eyesight really realistically is more distance vision getting away from screens mm. yeah and that's i think that's a really good point isn't it i think i mean with a lot of people working from home you know looking at screens and laptops you know i think like they should be probably mindful of that and just be you know try and be mindful of it and, and just take take breaks when they can away from the screen i mean i would you say it's reading as well? Like if you're reading a book, say in dim light and these kind of things and the lighting in the room, do you think that can impact eyesight as well? Because sometimes I'll read at night and I'll have to you know, put on a certain light so I can see. So, so do you think it's important if people are reading or they're looking, you, you know, you're even reading a book, you know, so they're not straining their eyes? Same thing. It's the distance. Like anything that you're doing at a close distance muscles tight mm. right now it's a time thing like if you're reading a book and then you're not picking up your phone the rest of the time then you're fine the problem is that people never stop right like it's just this ongoing close-up 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 social time is replaced by close-up i mean now every time i'm i'm usually not in big cities but when i'm in a big city i'm like people mm. are out for dinner we're in a freaking nightclub and they're still on their phone right so there is yeah if we just need to get away from those things yeah it would be helpful you know yeah no i i think that's really important and i think i think it's um something that is you know a lot more in the media like you know with the phones and i, I watched that I won't, I won't go too much into it but i watched that social dilemma documentary and um yeah. I, that that made me like think about you know social media and I think social media is great. Phones are great, but I think it's that kind of balance of how much you know you stare at them, because I think people don't always think about their eye health until you know that someone says you need glasses or they start experiencing problems. Um, would you, would you say sometimes if if people have got things going on in their lives and they're not kind of like seeing it, that their their vision can hurt can can start to alter because i mean when i when i i had things going on relationships in the past and there were things happening and i wasn't kind of seeing you know, if that makes sense what was going on in, in, in that relationship that wasn't good and i remember like when i was going to the shop that i couldn't see you know the the, the kind of the writing on the menu and then, you know, and it was weird because when I, when I came out of that relationship, my, my kind of vision kind of was more clear, if that makes sense, because I'd, hmm. I'd seen what was, do you know what I mean? I, I dealt with what was going on. And yeah. that's, that's like a yeah. bit of a different topic, but I mean, different, things are going on in people's di lives. Different topic for sure. Um, but apparently that kind of stuff happens. Like that's not really my area, but either way, even that kind of thing is just, going to the optometrist and getting glasses a lot of times isn't the right solution. You know what I mean? Mm. Like we mm. go, okay, all of a sudden my vision isn't what it's supposed to be figuring out what it is that's changed in my life or what am I doing or what else might be going on before you get on the permanent lens subscription train. Mm. So, so when people get glasses, say they say somebody has glasses for 10 years or five years, would, is it possible for them to kind of undo that damage done by the glasses if they were to not wear glasses would that would that muscle kind of ease back um so what happens once you wear glasses is another thing like your eye elongates and it's another kind of a longer biology lesson there um but it is because of the glasses so there's no damage it's actually just your eye adjusts to the lenses which mm. makes your vision apparently worse and then you need stronger and stronger glasses but that the eye is fundamentally healthy it's just it's changing its shape because of the lens you put in front of it and because of how the light changes where it hits mm. inside the eye. You can reverse that. It's just 
you slowly start wearing less and less strong glasses and you basically mm. adopt better habits. And then eventually your eyesight gets back to normal. Like I used to mm. wear really strong glasses. Yeah. Years. And how, how long did it take for you to, um, you know, what, what kind of made you decide not to wear them? Like where, how did you kind of make that change? I get tired of it. When your glasses get strong enough, your, it makes your eyes look really small behind them. So I had these little tiny piggy eyes and single dude, you know, vanity, all that stuff. And I, I'm kind of in a research field because this is not what I do professionally. Yeah, yeah, and of course. I started doing research and what, what the optometrist would say and what vision science and biology books would say were totally different. So I just started figuring out that what they're saying why you can't see well isn't the truth and then mm. reversing it became another thing but it took me probably like 10 years to mm. to really not ever need glasses again but i had to figure it all out like now it's a lot easier because we know how to do it um, mm. but i was kind of on my own back in the day so it took a long time yeah yeah no, i know th i think it's i think it's a really important you know topic and you know something to talk about because you know, millions of people wear glasses and probably, you know, out of those millions of people, a lot of people probably don't want to wear glasses. So, you know, I think, I think it's really important, you know, with this research and, you know, the things that you're, we're talking about and the work that you're doing on this is definitely key. And I think it can kind of encourage people to kind of look at the other areas and alternatives, you know, to think, you know, I don't need glasses, you know, if I can, you know, help my eyesight by, you know, doing X, Y, Z things and not looking at the screen as much. Yeah, it's 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 not super dissimilar from eating a lot of donuts and drinking a lot of cokes and ending up with diabetes. You know what I mean? It's mm. not the same because diabetes is a medical condition and an illness and myopia really mm. isn't in my opinion, but it's the same kind of thing where if you're generally aware of this idea that you can affect your well-being and a lot of things are not genetic as they say and that how you treat yourself like exercise and and mental health and and what you eat for diet like all those things play a role wherever you start out like if you're starting out with glasses as a first topic or you started out with food eventually you put the puzzle pieces together and you realize that you are better off if you take care of yourself first and do mm. a fair amount of research first and then live a better life than just becoming a victim of every sale of every kind of treatment there mm. is for for preventable stuff you know mm. yeah no i think that's really important you know because i think a lot of people they get told they need something and they go ahead and buy it and they get they kind of get stuck into that like loop um it's a bit like you know when they first say oh you need a new phone contract it's going to cost you xyz you know a lot of people just something i've made the mistake you just get it straight away because you want it Whereas if you step back and do a bit of research, you might find something else. And I think like, you know, with the eyesight side of things, I don't know why I made that comparison of phones to eyesight, but, um, <laughs> but, um, the, with, but people need to like, just not jump into it and just really think about it and think, you know, do I actually need these glasses? Is there an alternative? Because I think people just, they panic and then just get them. And then they're kind of yeah. cemented in that world. And it's, you know, and it, it I, I always am super hesitant with these topics because there is a lot of crazy talk on the internet and I get mm. crap for saying this because I'm not like, for example, man, I can't even open my mouth about any of these topics because it's just like, no, it's, fine. People, it's like either people believe everything that they're told in mainstream or they believe nothing. Like it's really mm. uncommon or not that uncommon, but it's pretty common for people to fall off the wagon completely and mm. then go, in deep in conspiracy world like everything is a conspiracy like mm. i've got kids i get my kids vaccinated just me saying these words right now like you're gonna get shit comments from people going oh vaccines vaccines bill gates yeah you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. far beat for me to judge that's not my topic but mm. it's i can understand people who go what i'm talking about about eyesight is another one of those deep yeah. end topics and it's not right like that's why i say scholar.google.com is a fantastic clinical science research tool that will mm. really tell you the actual known science is that myopia like you not seeing clearly at a distance is starts out as just a muscle spasm it's not a genetic defect it's not an illness 
right? Like, so mm. I get it when people go, I don't even want to hear about this. It's another internet crazy story because it's such a fine line between mm -hmm. like actual truth and just crazy conspiracies that rule mm. the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, of course. I, I, mean, I, was, I, was, I watch a lot of Joe Rogan and he, he talks about these things and he had, um, you heard Alex Jones? Alex Jones? Yeah, yeah. Of course. He's, He's, you know, I, a lot of the stuff he says is quite pretty factual, but I mean, I won't, I won't go too much into that, but it's like there's a fine line where you can say something and then it goes on to like a whole new tangent where there's always conspiracies. And when you look at, you know, YouTube, YouTube algorithms and things like this on the Internet, um, it's like you could type something in. And I think a good example is that, you know, Flat Earth. And because because... <laughs> because the algorithm kind of works in like what's trending it just spreads and then people that started believing that the earth, the earth was flat so i mean people have to be careful you know the information they look at and what they choose to believe but i think like you know with this you know you've got some hardcore you know evidence that you know this is real and that you know the the you know the how it's a muscle spasm to begin with you know you've got something here yeah so i i have to make that a distinction also hardcore evidence for sure that the cause of myopia is not genetic and that the treatment of glasses causes more myopia that is that is as close to fact as science can get me saying that it's reversible that's up for debate like mm. i will concede that i have anecdotal evidence of literally tens of thousands of people who significantly re reduce the dependence on glasses or totally don't need glasses anymore a lot but if somebody's going to argue about that i'm totally open to that discussion so there's like two pieces mm. right like what mm. the optometrist tells you is not true but what i tell you about reversing it is also open for yeah for looking into right like and i like to say that because i am really i'm not trying to convince anybody of my way i'm just saying yeah. hey this is a, a thing to look into like you know, flat earth and all that stuff. Like I have opened my mouth in the past saying stuff about that. And then I realize it's not my place, right? Like mm. I have an opinion mm. about it, which mm. is, I don't think the earth is flat, but then people who are genuinely into <laughs> fixing the eyesight, but also believe in flat earth are now disillusioned and mad at me, right? Because yeah. I'm messing with their belief system. And I don't want to be that guy. That's why I generally, no, no, generally no. don't talk about vaccines and flat earth and because i realize that i don't want to affect people people's people journey by me having opinions that are not not relevant yeah you know what i mean so yeah i learned that the hard way like i made some chemtrail comment many years ago on on some yeah. youtube video man people are so mad at me about it and i'm like i yeah. i recognize it's not my place you know what i mean yeah i think i think that's that's the the thing isn't it like everyone's got their own beliefs and i think like you know my, my podcast is pretty open and i you know i'm I, I'm open to, you know, the way people think and I've got no problem with the way people think and I think that's important and everyone's got their own belief. Um, but I think like sometimes people get triggered if, you know, you might say one thing and then that triggers their belief. But no, I, I agree. And I, I think like it's it's something that's definitely interesting, you know, the, the work that you do, you've been doing and the research. And I think it's something that people should look into because, you know, you... Like I said, with the, when you when you when you talk about the muscle spasm in your eye, and how you know the glasses can affect people's eyes, I think it's something that should be you know really thought about, and um, for people to make that decision to do research on it before you know jumping into it. Yeah, and the the, the part of the message too is you're not a victim. You know what I mean? Like you're not. It just puts you in this. I really resent it because what happens is people come to like the Facebook group or whatever, and they show up with a, a piece of paper that says what the doctors are and they're called a prescription, you know, and then optometrists call them patients. And it puts you in this space where you, you're, you're assuming you're helpless, you know mm. what I mean? Like, Oh, I'm sick. You know what I mean? And you're not. Mm. And that's the stuff that makes me like personally upset. Cause it's like, dude, you're fine. The thing that they call a prescription is a hard sell of a, a, a pair of lenses that cost five dollars that they're trying to sell you for 50 you know what mm. i mean like that's all it is you're fine and that's really part of my message is like the idea of empower yourself 
to look beyond people that are trying to sell you stuff and tell you that there's something wrong with you. Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. I think that's, that's really important, isn't it? I think people to, to can use their own judgment and to kind of look beyond what they're being told. And I think that, you know, I, I've heard a lot of stories and I, I've spoken to people who've had, you know, life, I won't get too much into it. You know, things happen and the doctors have said, you know, that's it. And, 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 and they've said no. You know, they, they, made, they made that decision and they thought about it. They're like, no, I'm going to be okay. You know, they're looking beyond what they're being told. And I think that is something that people should do more. You know, they should look beyond, you know, what that, you know, specialist or, you know, optimist is, is saying. With care, right? With, I like scholar.google.com. I always recommend it because past that doctor's recommendation is a swamp with some truth mm. and a lot of crazy talk. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a there's a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> because, because like I had thyroid problems, totally unrelated, but yeah, the, the, the doctor said it's a genetic thing. And as soon as I hear genetic, I'm already like, I don't believe you, but then finding, figuring it out really like some of the stuff I've seen on the internet about people saying what will fix your thyroid is scary, you know? And if you're not like it, and there's these giant echo chambers where just everybody's into one thing and you fall into this echo chamber forum where everybody has this weird method and you're like, wow, this seems to work for a lot of people where if you researched like science behind it, you went to Google Scholar, you'd realize that some of those things are actually pretty dangerous. That's mm. why I'm always really careful about like, yeah, look beyond the edge, but don't just assume that the stuff you find on the internet is necessarily a good idea. Yeah, I think I think that's the key, isn't it? Like, you know, a lot of the things you see or you read or you look at are kind of quite false or like, you know, very kind of obscured. They've kind of been twisted sometimes. So you have to be very, very careful, with, you know, what you look at. And yeah. that's why I love podcasts because it's, it's, um, it's an open discussion and you can get a lot of, you know, good knowledge from, from, from podcasts, uh, you know, some podcasts. And um, it's like, People can't always, like, I watch videos on YouTube, you know, I'm into kind of like, you know, these like ghost videos and because I've experienced things myself. But sometimes I look at and I'm like, eh, yeah, I look beyond it. And I'm like, yeah, that's not real. There's, there's, there's more going on there. And I think it's having that kind of, that mindset where you can kind of see things that way. Um, it's a bit like if you meet somebody, you know, and they're talking about something, you kind of, you kind of gauge with that person, don't you? And you kind of pick up on things and you kind of see beyond things. I think that's kind of how people should be, you know, especially with their eyesight. Yeah, especially. And the thing is like, you probably didn't look at it, but like, so enmiopia.org, the website is, there's a lot of rants and inside jokes. And I, I refer to myself as a holy eye guru with a very long and illustrious beard. That's, that's part of the thing that people run into. And it's kind of inside jokes and a lot of times people don't get it, but my point behind it is really, is there's no such thing, right? Like mm. there is no eye guru. I misspell wholly on purpose and I clearly don't have a beard, but it's yeah. this whole, if I don't believe the optometrist, should I believe this guy, right? Like it's mm. this, do we, do we believe this person? And my whole thing is always like, just do a little tiny bit of science research instead. You mm. know what I mean? Because, mm if I'm super good at it, right? Like the way I'm going to make money on the internet is being mm. convincing, right? Like mm. you're like, oh, mm. I trust, there's all these people like Dr. X, like yeah. just as example, cause that guy just rules search engines, fake doctor, like his doctor degree is in acupuncture. You know what I mean? And he gives, <laughs> he gives endocrinology advice. Like he is completely not qualified to be doing that, but maybe he's right. Like maybe he's giving good advice, but he's doing it with mm. a title that confers to him an authority that he doesn't have. You know what I mean? So mm. this mm. like trust on the internet to me is another one of those big things is like, if I'm charismatic enough, right. And I look like a guy I can trust. And I put doctor in front of my name. It's that's not, in my opinion, the best idea to go. We're just going to do what this guy says when mm. there's, when the, I keep saying it and I say it too much scholar.google.com love that, that subdomain because mm. it gives you just clinical studies. I mean, you can do mm. one quick search and be like, at least, mm. at least get an idea, right? Like, cause studies aren't the truth, but at least they're, they're based on the idea of peer review 
and data that you can quantify and you get a little bit better idea, right? Like is, is mm. vitamin C going to cure my cancer? I prefer Google Scholar over forums because mm. I'm going to get a little bit more of a wider sense than just people that are into some story, right? Yeah. You're going to get more kind of refined results for what you're searching rather than just into the mainstream search bar. Yeah. And, and just like, because, you know, does, do you get, do you get, can you cure cancer with vitamin C is one of those random rabbit holes, super fascinating, by the way. Mm. And that's a great example for, there's a lot of people who believe that. And there's a lot of people mm. who say that mainstream pharma is suppressing this because it's mm. too cheap and it fixes cancer. And then like, if you dig into that, like what you said about YouTube algorithm, you find yourself in a place where you're like, holy crap, this is yeah. a huge conspiracy. But then when you flip mm. over to Google Scholar, then there's actual studies trying to quantify if that happens, right? And I'm not, yeah. I have no opinion on the vitamin C no, cancer no. thing either way, but you get a totally different perspective when you leave the echo chamber of Google mm. algorithm and go, what is, what's the science? You know what I mean? Like, mm. did people study this? What's up? Mm. Yeah, no, I think, that's, I think that's definitely key. And I think like, you know, it's just questioning, you know, that thing, isn't it? And um, it makes me think about, you ever heard of Alan Watts, that philosopher, yes. Alan Watts? Yeah. And, you know, the things he was talking about and the things that he was putting forward, he was like way ahead of his time. And, you know, a lot of people didn't really kind of like, well, kind of what was he talking about, you know, j during that time, it's the like 60s or the 70s. And a lot of the stuff he said, it's, you know, he talks about now. I mean, he talks about then, it's kind of happening now and kind of more relatable to now. And it's like, it's, it's in a similar way, isn't it? Like, you know, you've, you know, you're talking about this and a lot of people might not agree with it, might overlook it, but like, you know, like just by, you know, over time, they'll be like, you know, damn, I, I should have looked more into that. I should have, do you know what I mean? Question that more. Yeah. And there's too much stuff to research also. That's another issue. Mm. Like mm. we get overwhelmed, right? Like I don't have room anymore. Like we've got a forum, right? Like, it's a fairly big forum and there's a lot of conversation going on. And like there's diet conversations, for example, like should we eat this or should we eat that? Yeah. And I tune out because my brain just have no room left to for another freaking rabbit hole yeah. on another topic. So I also, I totally respect it because people sometimes when we talk about eyesight, they're just like, man, right. My, my day is full of stuff already. I can't handle another. Yeah. In that <laughs> rabbit hole. No, that's true. I think people should be careful what rabbit holes, you know, they, they, they go down because you could spend hours looking at stuff that isn't, you know, valid. Um, but I'm I'm aware I'm aware of your time. Is that okay? Are you are you up for time? Yeah, I'm I'm a little tiny bit. Yeah, I'm a little tiny bit. Yeah, short yeah. Because I got to think. So that's fine. Um, but but no, it's it's been it's been a pleasure talking to you, Jake. And um, I've really I've really enjoyed this conversation. You know, this is you know something that I I'm new to. You know, this kind of like area. So it's it's interesting you know to hear about it and to learn about it. And I'll I'll definitely look more into it. Um. And I think, you know, you're doing a great, great work in what you're doing. And um, where, where can people find you on, like, you know, your website and social media? It's myopia, isn't it, .org? Yes, it's myopia.org. And then I don't do personally a lot of social media, but there's a link on the top of the site to resources. We do have a YouTube channel and Facebook group and forum and all that stuff. Um, I'm more of an outside guy. So I personally don't do a whole lot of that. Yeah. But the community is huge. Yeah. So if people are curious about this stuff, there's a lot of not just research and answers, but there's also a really big community of people that are into this. Mm. And what's our Facebook group called? Sorry. So people, if it's, they want to join. It, it's just end myopia. Um, yeah. Yeah. You find it. It's the, there's a couple fake ones, but the big one with like 18, 19,000 members is the real one. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and, you know, I wish you all the best and, um, you know, what you're doing and your work and your research and, you know, your, your YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, I, I think you should just keep on doing it. And, uh, I hope people take for something from this because I think, you know, it's definitely, definitely an important topic. Yeah. Cool. I appreciate it. Adam. It's awesome. Took the time. No. Have a little chat. Yeah. No, no, you're welcome. No, have, have a great, have a great um, day where you are on your time. All right. Thanks, Adam. No, no you're welcome.